So we're here at the Shortech Insight event in London. Um, I've managed to drag John Walker in, who I've been chasing for the best part of a year, actually, uh, to get a conversation with. So thanks very much and welcome to the Sphere IT podcast. Thanks very much for having me. I appreciate it. I'm glad that you chased me. Yeah, <laughs> great stuff, great stuff. So tell me a little bit about your background. And, and obviously, because I'm a data science guy, I love data science, machine learning, hence the reason I want to talk to you. Tell me a bit about your background and what you're doing now. Uh, yeah, sure. So um, I run the London Digital Hub for Mitsubishi Mitomo Group. Um, and my background is that, you know, I'm old enough that when I started working, none of this existed. Like you didn't have InsureTech, you didn't really have programming. Like programming was VBA in Excel. Um, so I started off as an accountant. I am an accountant by background. Um, and then... Uh, A real blast at a dinner party. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. That's why no one ever invited me. They were just like, don't bring this guy here. Um Thankfully, during the course of my career, this all became a thing. Yeah. Um, I'm mathematically minded, which helps. Uh, I uh, had a natural affinity to programming. I just sort of like fell into the space. Um, and I'm very lucky to be here. Like, re re I, like, I love my job. I'm glad that I'm not an accountant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my whole family have been accountants and, and investment bankers prior to me, so I'm glad I did right. something so different and I love it. So you broke away from the fold. Broke away from it. They'll never forgive me. It's like, how, <laughs> how can you not be a banker? Excellent. Um, but yeah. So, that's what so, so what is it you're doing on your day-to-day -day work? Are you, are you involved in innovation or more, you know, keeping the lights on? What are you doing? Yeah, definitely no interest in keeping the lights on. Well, let's just turn them off. Yeah. <laughs> um, best things happen in the in the dark when we have to think about things and come in your ideas. My, my job ultimately is to say, hey, this is our operating model today. Why is that our operating model today? Let's bin that. And I don't mean like one or two percent of it. I mean all of it. Like just wow. get rid of it. I mean wow. that's ultimately my goal is tackle and query everything. Yeah. Say it could be done better. Um, there's a big thing in, um, I think it's done by PwC, they talk about steep, but there's this idea that, you know, incremental change will no longer keep you up with everything that's happening in the world. I absolutely espouse for that, okay? I don't think you can do it anymore. I think it's a waste of time. I think you will make yourself redundant in that method. And I think as an industry, we are still very much stuck on this. Oh, we'll just do a little bit here and a little bit there, the Tinker Masters. Yeah. That is redundant. Yeah, that okay. is redundant. Get rid of it. You know, there were companies last year, or let's say just before Gen AI, which ChatGPT came out and they all got excited about it. They were probably still building data warehouses. Sure. There's a sign of how well off the times you are. Yeah. Like a company has just released something that will answer theoretically any question you've got is in a nice, natural language manner. And you were building this structured data warehouse. You should be ashamed of yourselves. <laughs> right, so my job is to say, be ashamed of that. And right. don't let that happen again. And let's do something cool. Challenge the status quo. Challenge the status quo. So that, that thinking must be quite hard to instill in a industry that has a culture of slow. No, oh, we're risk mundane. averse. Yeah. We, we, we manage risk and accordingly we are risk averse. Um, but I think it's becoming an easier conversation. Right. Because everything in business is ultimately about ROI. Let's just be frank here. That's what it's about. We care about getting money back. We care about our results. You know, 30 years ago, the most profitable companies were natural resources companies. You're looking at oil companies. Today is data companies. Yeah, absolutely. That is never changing. No. Like, data is the most valuable commodity in the world, bar none, of everything. Look at, you know, the valuation of OpenAI just now. Look at the companies spring up Look about at it. the automotive businesses. They, like, they, they used to be OEMs. Now they're data OEMs. Now they're data. Everyone wants to have that word data before their company. I don't think this is like a dot-com bubble where you're going to have, like, you know, the AOL time at Warner thing and everyone goes, oh, my God, that was a mistake in hindsight. That's not this. Yeah. This is the new operating model. Data is the most valuable commodity in the world. That's how you return investment. That's sure. how you make money as a company. We should start accepting more risk on the basis that we could get a higher return. Right. And I think, um, I think if people start really thinking about that, they'll notice that that is the model. That's sure. where we should be trying to get to. So, so, so from a company that has been, let's say, stagnating a little bit and wanting to push to this kind of level that you're talking about and as Chad is the status quo. All the th around data, what would the first thing you would say to them in the insurance market? Carrier, you know, we're not going to name any, but a carrier wants to make that journey. What's the first thing they need to do? Yeah, stop creating data. Stop creating data. Stop, stop thinking that what you're given at the beginning isn't enough for you to make every decision that you have from then on. But if you think about it, 
in your own life, when someone comes to you with a problem, you don't like rush off and do all sorts of things and ask it, or maybe you do as well, but most of the time instinctually, you know what you're gonna do straight away, like you've made that decision. As a business, we seem to spend a huge amount of time trying to ratify why we did something after the fact we did it. And our entire operating model is built around the fact that, hey, we did this, now let's justify it to everyone. Get rid of that, that was a stupid mindset. Like just that is, that's daft, it makes me mad even to think about. <laughs> just accept the fact you aren't given something. Stop getting very caught up in like what the quality of that is. It's obviously good enough because it's been given to you as something so they believe it's got a value and use that to make your decisions and use what you go with and then make everything run from there. We should be doing the 99 to 1 thing, like 1% added data where we say, oh, here's our strategy. Here's our view on risk in Israel at the moment. Here's, you know, these little bits and bobs that we're adding. Everything else should be 99%. If you have to create it after Genesis, it's not worth doing. Just scrap sure. it and move on. And that's how our operating model should be. So the operating model needs to fundamentally change culturally, physically. The skill sets as well is quite important. You know, you're yeah. going to have to decide you've got teams in your business that have experience in one area need to upskill you might need to go out to partners you might need to yeah there's so a, there's a whole ecosystem skills. of individuals there that help but i do think the main one is what do we think we gain from all the activities we do afterwards like where is the roi like this person typing data into this system what we should constantly be asking, well, why are we doing that? And if it's not for any purpose, then get that person to do something of value, like understand the data that they don't have to type in. All of those things. I think we get caught up in upskilling. I think upskilling exists. Of course sure, it does, okay? okay. Um, my granddad, rest his soul, I'm pretty certain I could still put in front of something that he would be able to understand it, give me an answer about it, and go on. Like, you don't need to be upskilled. He was a banker. Yeah. He was a, you know, he was ultimately at the beginning, he was a chemical engineer. I think the skills exist. Yeah. I think they're just focused on the wrong things at the moment. Like the thing that we're focused on at the moment is almost this massive tick box exercise that we've created. Of, oh yeah, I've, I've got 400 data items. Let's get rid of that. Get people where they are. Like underwriting claims professionals, you know, these are lawyers. These are uh, um, stockbrokers. These are really, really clever people. They have degrees from places, or even if they don't have degrees, let's get rid of that. They, they've got skill. Get them using that skill and the thing that you hired them for and stop thinking, oh, well, hold on, justify their existence by having them doing all this other ancillary stuff. I think you could scrap it and I think it could be gone. Sure. And, and within the businesses that you've worked in, and I've seen different models, not models in this space. And what I mean by that is if you're looking around scaling a data science capability as advancement in your business, your goal is to build um, a completely robust data, set, data science center of excellence. Yeah. Sometimes it's federated and most of the time it starts centralized. Yeah. What is the most common one that you've seen in terms of that skill base and how it's utilized and managed across your businesses? That you yeah, have? I think it has to be centralized. I think unless you're one of the really, really, really big data players, the only way to really manage cost and then make that ROA argument is if you centralize it. The second you federate it, you're going to start duplicating work, maximizing costs. You're just reducing the impact. So I don't know if I think that works. You can have a degree of small federation, absolutely. But I think generally you need something that's centralized. You need a centralized idea about it. Yeah, um, yeah. and governance as well is another thing because the, the experimental nature of data science and the risk adverse nature of insurance don't always come together no, they very don't. well. Uh, but about governance, I think we get caught up as well in like, the definition of something. What I think is governance more than that is just, this is the best practice method that we've just agreed on we will do. And it doesn't matter if there are another 10 ways of doing it, this is just our method. And I think that's a slightly different type of governance that I care about a lot more. If you're gonna validate an ML model, here's how you validate it. We understand there are other ways, but that's not our conversation. We've moved on from that. It's like, it's like when you're having a conversation with your wife and you need to move on from the conversation, close down certain parts, make decisions, <laughs> yeah. stick to them and go on. You know, sure. and, and I think we, we're, retro, we're too retrospective. So governance for me is about making decisions about what we consider best practice and then sticking to our guns. Like the flip-flopping of data strategies and data governance is again, just a massive cost element. Like just get rid of it, stick to your thing, go with what you want and what you think is right, back yourself. Don't then you know look at the next shiny thing and go oh my goodness I'll, I'll have a look at that like, I think that's mistake. so so in a way are you saying that a data strategy is foolhardy or you have to be able to 
pivot a little bit more around that idea more effectively? I think if your data strategy becomes very stringent, very kind of like um, maybe maybe a bit too articulated, you've thought about it too much, then you lose some agility. And I think that that's a mistake. I mean, again, I'm going to go back to Gen AI, okay? Everyone's trying to implement it now. I think a lot of companies are probably making very bad decisions about that, how they are implementing it because they've not really thought about their technology. And by that, I mean that they've tied themselves into hoops about how they're going to do it. They, they gave themselves such a strict background of how they can do things, how they can deploy new technologies, how they can do things like ML ops. Agility is important again. Like that ability to like, that, that reactive opportunism is something that we should be embracing in our data world. Like how do I take something and make sure that I can go here, there and everywhere really, really rapidly in line with the business? Because the world is changing. I mean, when... When... We've only just got the first set of regulations out of the EU now. Yeah. So that's something there's going to be a lot of rollback on strategy again based massive. on that. I mean, it's massive. huge. Yeah. And everyone's worried about liability. The EU Act doesn't really give you a massive indication about where liability stands. No, I think I mean, that's to be sorry, argued. Sorry, 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 yeah. I mean, um, proving harm for uh, subliminal messaging. And that's almost impossible to kind of prove. But at the same time, it's still something you've got to worry about. Yeah. Right? And you should be worried about it. Yeah, you should be worrying about it. You should also be thinking about the thing about technology now, I think, is that the pace of change is so rapid that we struggle to keep up with it in terms of our legislation. Like I look at social media companies, for example, and I look at like Meta. I think it is almost unarguable that they're not harmful to society in almost every way. Has legislation kept up with that? It absolutely hasn't. Like, is there lots of really harmful material out there on these kind of platforms? It is. Those, you know, Facebook, what? 2007, I think it started, it came into existence. You know, that's a long time ago. Yeah. We've yet to catch up. Why does everyone think that Gen AI is going to be very, very different? Like, the reality is that we move slower, certainly legally, than we do with technology. Now, I'm not saying that you should be on that wild west of things and yeah. doing bad stuff. Absolutely, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, don't think that you're going to arrive at a conclusion or that the legislators are in the next 24 months. They're not. Five years from now, you might have an idea about, well, hold on, what is the liability of Gen AI? Maybe even longer than that. Yeah. You know, it could take forever to have that argument. And and in there will be the deals that they make to actually try and close it down. So I have no idea what will happen in that space. I think you could expend a lot of effort there. You should expend some effort. You should also have your eye on the fact that it's moving. And that model will be very, very different two years from now. Sure, sure. So final thoughts then on Gen AI. Are you a naysayer or very positive about the whole thing? Oh, I'm... I am positive about every technology. I'm positive about change. I think, I think that it's just a, there's just a reoccurring cycle here of change, which is this new thing comes out and everyone's going to lose their jobs and we're all going to be redundant and we all panic. And, you know, I'm sure it happened when steam engines came out and everything else. And the reality is that as far as I can tell, employment is the unemployment, sorry, is the lowest it's ever been in this country. So we've weathered those storms before. Really? Is AI going to change your your life in the future? I absolutely believe it will. Will you adapt to that? I absolutely believe you will. Will that lead to like just better standards of life and living? Yeah, because I think that history tells us that. I don't know why we look at AI and think it's any different. It's just a new technology that empowers a new way of living or the new way of doing things. Our job should be to think, well, hold on, what is the opportunity here? How do I take that and do something with it? Rather than thinking, oh, I don't know. I don't want to, you know, I'm... Everyone complains about doing too much manual work. So why are they complaining that AI might get rid of that for them? It's kind of, it feels a bit odd. It yeah, feels sure. odd to me. So sure. no, I'm a believer. I'm a believer in all technological change. One. Some of it will fade away. Some of it won't. But embrace it. Take the ride. See where you get to. Brilliant. John, thanks ever so much for your time. Real pleasure, Peter. Thank, Thank you, you so much Cheers. for having me. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you, guys.